Hey everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. If you're new here or you have not already, please consider subscribing and helping us feed a hungry hippo. And of course, don't forget to hit the thumbs up while you're listening today. Today is December 5th and it's a Tuesday. So that means it's time for what sold on eBay. Just like every week, we're going to start out with the plushies. I do show you every single plush that sells every single week. And then I do a recap every month of every single plush that sold because I love them so much. They're my favorite. Then I have picked out some highlights to talk about with you whether it's just good bread and butter brands, things that surprised me, or good sales that we had, things that you can be looking out for when you're sourcing. We're looking at the week of December 20, nope, November 27th through December 3rd. Let me repeat that because I don't edit. Y'all know that. November 27th through December 3rd is the week we're looking for. So basically last Monday through Sunday. Y'all want to start with a hippo? I wanted to keep him. I really did. He was so cute. But he was a folk monist, which is a bolo brand of puppets. Some of the larger, more realistic ones can go for a lot more money than this. But most of your folk monists are going to hit right between the $20 and $40 uh, mark. And that includes shipping and everything. This guy sold for $21.44 plus $5.50 shipping. So you're looking like right at $26. He is so stinking cute. Look at his mouth. Oh, my goodness. I love hippos. Did you know that? Could you tell? <laughs> um, but, yes, puppets in general are good. Folk Manus is a good brand of puppets. And they also have Folk Tales by Folk Manus. You can keep your eyes out for those as well. But puppets in general are good. I had a wholesale lot of plush I bought once that had a ton of bunch of puppets in it that were smaller and unbranded. They didn't have tags. Not one of them sold for under 12 bucks. So puppets are good. Um, this one had a lot to go in his title. He's a stage puppet, folk monist, hippo hippopotamus. So I didn't have a lot to work with in his title. But if you have room in your title, when you put up puppets, you could put things like imagination, story time, pretend, um, educational toy, educational play, things like that. Next, we have in all seasons, Build-A-Bear. This is the summer one. They did have one for every season. I ended up with the summer one. If I don't tell you otherwise, all of my plush nowadays come from wholesale lots that I purchase. If you're curious as to where I get it on my wholesale, I did do a video a few weeks ago on where to buy inventory in the winter. And I did give you some sources to get some plush in bulk. But I also have a personal shopper, my plush dealer, Leslie, that I pay to source just for me. I also do a lot of buyouts and things, but I'll have that video link at the end to give you some ideas. But if I don't tell you otherwise, all my plush these days pretty much come from these wholesale purchases just because individually, one-off, they are way too expensive at our thrifts here. They start at like 5 to $10 a piece. It's just not worth it. I don't personally go to the bins or anything. I prefer to buy the wholesale and have it shipped right to my door. So the average price for my plushies are between a dollar and two, depending on how much shipping was and how many came in the box, but never over two dollars. This Build-A-Bear All Seasons Summer Bear sold for $15.74 plus seven shipping. Super cute. And we just do flat rate shipping. If y'all didn't hear about when we switched to shipping, we used to always do free shipping. We switched to charging in August just to kind of test the waters and see what happened during Q4, kind of give it a chance. And we just do a flat rate. Um, if it's one, two, four ounces, we charge $4.99. Five to eight ounces, $5.49. And 9 to 16 is $6.99. And so this weighed clearly between 9 and 16 ounces. So we did the $6.99. It never cost that much to ship. Um, so it's basically the same price as we've always charged. This is a bear that I would have started around 
maybe 20 to 25 dollars will free ship next up we have a gans webkin lionfish and most of these plush that i'm going to be showing you that have sold are newer so it could be the time of year or it could just be hitting like getting really good plush and hitting the right people at the right time who are looking for these items but most of the plush i've been pulling the last couple of weeks have been newer um and i can tell well, one, you kind of remember when you list things, but just from where I'm pulling them from in our inventory system. And some of these, it's like, I remember just showing this in like a uh, unboxing not too long ago. The Gans Webkins had a sealed code and he sold for 1137 plus 549 shipping. Here's a build -Bear, how to train your dragon. So this dragon had some pink marks on him when I, or her. When I first got it and writing on the paw, I think the pink marks may have been uh, from being washed with an outfit on it. A lot of the white animals or white build bears if you get them and they have like a pink or a blue tinge, it typically means someone had an outfit on it and put it through the washing machine, not on cold. And some of the colors of the clothes wore off. So I sprayed her down really, really good with awesome. It's a cleaner you can get at the Dollar Tree. I was going to say for a dollar, but I think it's $1.25 now. It's a yellow cleaner called Awesome. It is amazing. I have been using it for my entire reselling career to spot clean plushies and also to spray them down and let them soak before I run them through the washer. Don't put your plushies in the dryer. Uh, everything came off and she came out looking pretty nice, except for the writing on her hand. I'm sure that was permanent marker. But as you can see, I put a picture. I disclosed it. And she sold for $10.49 plus $13 shipping. And that's the shipping flat rate we put on anything that weighs one to two pounds. We put the $12.99. And if they sell within zones one to five, sometimes you can get away with seven to eight bucks for shipping for your label that you're paying for. And don't feel like you need to refund your buyer. I would have sold this for, you know, $25 free ship and entertained offers. So 13 plus 1049 is the same exact thing. I don't feel inclined to refund the buyer because if I was offering free shipping, I would have charged the same amount as when I'm charging shipping. And they agree to this amount up front when they're buying it. And the box I ship them in is the 12 by 12 by 9 free box you can get on USPS website. Their priority boxes are pretty large. You can get most big plushies down in there. Um, we actually have been selling so much plush. We've been pulling so many plushies and a lot of our big ones have been selling. So I have to re remember to order myself more boxes, but I love those boxes uh, because they're within the dimensions before the prices get astronomical. 12 by 12 by 9 is the cutoff and you can get really big plush down in there. You can put in tissue paper, whatever you want to make it look nice. Here's a Hallmark Itty Bitty Star Wars Yoda. Like, I just listed him last week or the week before. He hasn't been up that long. That's really fast in Plush World. He sold for $5 plus $5 shipping. Here's a Hulk. Marvel Kids Incredible Hulk. He does talk, and I said that in the description and the title that he talks. And he has a little tag that says he talks, too. I took a best offer of $6.29 on the Hulk and then had five shipping. Peppa Pig, I took a best offer of $5.74 and she had $5 shipping. Peppa Pig herself is kind of oversaturated. So she's one of those characters that's going to sell for less. So if you don't like bread and butter or filler items and you have a choice, if you're out at yard sales or church sales or wherever you're at getting cheap plush, avoid her. I don't mind fuller plush. I'd pick her up if I was choosing my own plush. She comes to me in wholesale lots all the time. In fact, sometimes I get boxes full of her and I don't care. She, she's a good seller. She has a pretty good salty rate, but she has lower cost because she's oversaturated. Now, the other characters from the show, her mom, her dad, the little dinosaur guy, those tend to sell for a little bit more. And that goes with any children's show or popular movies. The more common characters like Mickey Mouse, like Big Bird and Kermit the Frog, they're all going to be oversaturated. There's certain characters in Winnie the Pooh 
that go for more because there's less of them listed. So just keep all of that in mind. Make sure you're comping stuff when you look it up. Unless you buy really, really cheap wholesale and don't really care like we, we do. We just, we're volume sellers. We sell it all. Here's a Build-A-Bear t-shirt. Um, this did not come from my recent Build-A-Bear lot. If you saw that on the channel when I opened the box, the huge lot of Build-A-Bear clothes. This actually came from my um, plush dealer, Leslie. She had tossed it in with a bunch of animals. And I didn't have anything else to lot it up with. So I just decided to list it for five plus seven shipping and see what happens. And it's old. A plain blue Build-A-Bear shirt. Look at that. I keep telling you guys, Build-A-Bear is not a poop brand. People will pay for it. Um, and the, they do. So I did get some plain shirts in with that lot. And so then I made lots. So I could charge more for bigger amounts. But if I have a one-off shirt like this, I just usually list it for right around 12. A Build-A-Bear orange tabby cat. This one sold for 13 plus 7 shipping. Super cute. Oh my goodness. It had writing on the tush tags. So I just took a picture and disclosed that. I do well with orange tabbies, regardless of the brand. People like orange cats. They're popular. We have a, a poopy panda bear. <laughs> this was Global USA. I'm pretty sure that's like Dollar Tree or Walgreens. I didn't even bother putting a brand in the title because um, no one's looking for Global USA. That's just not keywords. I'm going to use in my valuable real estate up here in the title. So I put really good keywords. It's a Christmas panda bear. It's got a Santa hat, a holiday scarf. And he sold for a best offer of $5.30 plus six shipping. And then we have Dizzy. Dizzy? This is Dizzy, guys. Disney Tarzan Tantor. So this is from the Disney movie Tarzan. And this is Tantor the elephant. You can see his tag is fading. And I, I disclosed that. I try to tell the buyer everything. Some buyers don't read. Some buyers don't look at pictures. And unfortunately, some buyers only look at the main picture. But hopefully, most buyers are doing their due diligence and being conscious of what they're paying for. But they always say, take pictures like there's no description and write your description like there's no pictures. So just make sure you disclose everything so there's never surprises. Tarzan's Tantor sold for $12.01. That's a weird price. And $6 shipping. Next, we have a vintage FAO shorts Patrick the Pup plush. Now, mine was 17 inches. So when I comped Patrick the Pup, prices were all over the place. And that's because it depends on the size. The smaller Patrick the Pups go for a lot less. And of course, ones even bigger than mine would go for a lot more. This is something I would probably have charged $50 free ship for back in the day. So because he weighed three pounds, he's a heavy little big, Patrick the Pup is a little chonker, guys. Although he coming, he's a chonk. He weighed three pounds. So I put $17.99 shipping on him and then um, $32.41. And that's what he sold for. And we got a thank you from the buyer. I think we already got feedback on him. So everybody's happy for this $50 FAO shorts dog. Some of the FAO shorts that I've recently been getting on comping, I've been disappointed. Not to the point where I wouldn't list it or wished I didn't get it. Like, I always am happy to get FAO shorts. It's a good brand. But some of the smaller ones and some of the other animals don't comp as high. I don't know if it's oversaturation or, and here we have to say it at least once every video, if it's turds racing to the bottom, but you guys, FAO Shorts is a toy store in New York City. It's been in movies. It's a good brand. It's an expensive brand. Don't devalue it. Stop racing to the bottom. I got $50 all in for the 17 inch Patrick the Pup. Look at his face. Patrick would like you to stop racing to the bottom, too. It makes him sad. That's it for the plush last week. That's all our plush that sold on eBay. So now we're just going to take a look at some other items I pulled out to talk to you about. Here's some Talbots. I don't really source Talbots anymore. 
when I first started reselling, Talbots went for a lot more money. And I think part of the problem with Talbots isn't just the race to the bottom. It's not as popular of a brand anymore. Some people consider it like an old lady brand. I don't mind it when I get it in like a wholesale or a thread up box. That's fine. I don't source it personally myself with the exception of plus size. You guys know that when, well, when it's not winter time and I'm not hibernating inside my house with all my inventory that I've squirreled away, but in the spring and summer and the fall, when I'm actually going out once a week or once every other week, we have 99 cent days here at plenty of our thrift stores and Almost anything that's plus size, women's jeans, 99 cents, even the Walmart brand, I will grab. They sell well, even Walmart. I get 20 to 25 all in. So you can see that these are plus size too. So I didn't source these myself. They did come in a box. Uh, 1224 plus 10 shipping. So that's not too shabby. I mean, that's still a pretty good bread and butter brand. They just, they're very slow to sell, so I don't really source them unless they're plus size. Abercrombie and Hollister are still two of my favorite smaller sized bread and butters to get. I talk about both brands on the channel a lot because I do really well with them. I have a lot of friends who say they don't, but I do really well. And technically on paper, and listen guys, we're currently working on updating our guides for 2024. And I've been doing some work on the jeans guide to help Keith out. On paper, Abercrombie and Hollister should be really slow. I can't keep them in my house. They fly off the shelf. Both of those brands, I get the really small sizes. They almost always ship first class. Maybe it's just my magic item. I've heard that everyone has one item that they can sell really well. And everyone else is like, how do you do that? I can't even pay people to take that. So maybe they're my magic item, the small jeans. But these sold for a best offer of 10 and seven shipping. And that's about what I always did when I did free ship on the Hollister and Aber Abercrombie. I would do like 18, sometimes up to 25. It would depend on the size and style, if it had button fly or anything special. Next up, we have Miss Me. We sold a couple of Miss Me's. Um, this one I took a best offer, 26 plus the 10 shipping. I used to get all in 50 for Miss Me's. Nowadays, you're looking right between 35 and 40. Again, stop racing to the bottom. It only hurts all of us. Hey, this was a new to me brand that came to me in a thread up box. I love getting thread up boxes with brands in it I've never heard of because then I learn new things. Um, these had some puckering, which you can see I did show and mention. Jean shows some puckering. And these are verve. That's what I want to call them. If they're vervet, that's cool too. These are the ankle skinny jeans. I would pick these up for 99 cents. These sold for 13 plus 7 shipping. So that means they were first class. I still call it first class. Y'all, I mean ground advantage. I think I've said first class maybe twice in this video. I hope you all know I mean ground advantage, but in my head, I still call it first class. Next up, we have a poopy brand <laughs> style company. Um, I If I found these in the store for 99 cents, new with tags, especially if they were size 14 or larger, I would definitely pick them up. If they weren't new with tags, mm, probably not so much. But these did come in a box, so I was happy to have them. And I sold them for 13 in 12 cents plus the 9.99 shipping cut from the cloth this is still an okay brand it's not spectacular anymore it's kind of slower unless you have something unique these have the cuffs and stuff i still pick them up if they're 99 cents i'm still happy to get them in my wholesale lots this pair sold for 15 plus 10 shipping and then last but not least I have an empty case. Say what? Yes, we sold an empty video game case. There are certain video game cases, especially if they still have the manual inside, that you can sell for pretty decent money. Because video game nerds, and I mean that with love, guys, because Keith and I are video game nerds also, so don't take offense. We're also nerds. 
um, and collectors may have a game, but no case to put it in, and they'll pay for the case because they want the case. Most of your cases that are going to sell empty for good money are going to be Pokemon in our experiences. We had, right when we first started reselling, within like the first year or two, we had a ton of bunch of empty cases. We got at some yard sale they just like, gave to us. And some of them sold for like 80 bucks. So, you know, if you're out and about and you find empty cases somewhere, don't be afraid to ask them if you can buy them or even have them free. Because um, most people don't see the value in them. It takes a certain collector to see the value. This one sold for 15 plus 5 shipping. And it is the Alpha Sapphire 3DF Pokemon. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below. I do try to answer everyone. I should preface that by telling you guys. Sometimes I get really behind on answering comments. But I do eventually answer questions and talk to you guys. If you want a quicker response, join our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod, and tag me in there. Or just ask a question of the group. Everyone in there is really nice. And they are happy to answer questions and help you out. Until next time, go be productive. Go make some money. I guess I should have told you the link to our group is in the description box. It's called Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Okay, so go make some money. Go be productive. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.